Joe Zarzer here with Dr. Malone for another installment of Zarzer Law TV. Um, given the summer, we always do a segment on boating, jet ski, uh, accidents. Uh, unfortunately, they're very predominant. Um, the most important thing you need to understand about boating or jet ski accidents is that it involves more likely than not, in 99% of the t occasions, it will involve a thing called maritime law. That's very important because it takes you out of state law and puts you into a whole new category of law that requires somebody that knows exactly what to do because it is a minefield of, of problems if you don't know what you're doing. And let me give you an example. Um, for instance, there is a six-month period where a person that owns a vessel can file a document in the county or the court, the area where this accident happens, and they can limit potentially the liability associated with the injury or death to the value of the vessel. So let me give you a for instance, jet ski collision, once my dies. The owner of the jet ski that caused the death could actually file a piece of paper in the federal district court for the area where you are and try to limit the total amount of damages the dead person's family can recover to the value of the jet ski, which many times can be less than $10,000. If something is not filed to contradict that limitation of liability action, then your family and you are forever barred from collecting anything more than the value of the vessel. Period. So it's really important that you engage somebody uh, to represent you or your family um, in a maritime or a boating jet ski accident right at the outset. And you've got to ask that lawyer, have you handled maritime cases before? and tell me all the things that I need to be worried about as far as pitfalls versus a regular case. And if they can't answer your question well, then move on down the road. Uh, Florida has board certified civil trial lawyers and they also have board certified maritime lawyers. Um, uh, we don't have that many dual board certified maritime and, uh, and uh, civil trial lawyers in this county, Escambia, Santa Rosa, and Okaloosa but there's tons in Miami and the tons in South Florida. Um, depending on where your injury occurs, of course, most board certified civil trial lawyers in this part of the state have handled enough maritime cases to where they know how to handle them. The reason the South Florida guys get board certified in maritime law is that they're dealing with cruise ship cases. And the cruise ship cases, uh, as you probably can imagine, are even more complicated because they're dealing with other countries' laws. So. Um, here, as long as you have a board certified civil trial lawyer that's handled maritime cases, it's important for you to uh, seek that person out. Now, if you're, uh, if you're injured on the water, Dr. Malone wants to talk to you about things that you should and shouldn't do, in addition to the typical stuff about seeking treatment, but what is in particular about salt water, Dr. Malone, that's really important for people to understand in regards to injuries? Well, and we joke that, oh, salt water is clean, and we go clean our wounds out in salt water and make it all clean. It's actually less clean. Maybe that comes from the whole iodine. People put iodine on wounds? Is that, is it that... might. I mean, it's some sort of a briny substance, I okay. guess. I don't know. But okay. um, anyhow, salt water, the Gulf water around here, it's not clean. So if you have an open wound that results from some What about when it's action? crystal clear and it's pretty? Still it's not, not clean, right? Yeah, so it's still kind of, <laughs> there's still bacteria living in there. It's, uh, there's uh, millions of them. They're not always bad for you, but if you have an open wound, then it, it definitely exposes you to the possibility of getting something, a complication where you could lose your life, you could lose a limb. This is where you get these flesh-eating bacteria, and here it's usually the Vibrio bacteria. So it, those are the things that if you have an injury resultant from, you know, it, while you're in the water, whether it's from a boat, whether it's from stepping on something sharp, or whatever it is, Get out of the water, keep it clean, and pay attention to it to make sure that it's not progressing. If it is, you need to seek care immediately. Mm -hmm. um, to that same mention of being on vacation, it, I, I was on vacation, I cut my leg open, I didn't want to spend half the day going to the ER, and I still want to enjoy the rest of my vacation. We have all this boating stuff planned. Getting back in the water when you have an open wound or a sizable wound 
you're doing yourself a disservice. So sad to say, for all intents and purposes, your vacation, at least the water part of it, is probably over the moment you get yourself a pretty nice gash or a cut. And, and, and if you have any kind of comorbidity or if you're immu immunodeficiency, older person that doesn't, maybe is not as strong, you can actually die from this bacteria. Yeah. And it happens all the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here yeah. in Pensacola. Yeah. So it's really an important thing for you to pay attention to what Dr. Malone is saying about the Vibrio stuff. We're going to link it up, this video up to a Vibrio blog post we've done in the past. I'm also going to tie it up to a maritime sort of checklist type thing that we've done in the past so that you folks can understand where we're coming from with both these uh, concerns. Um, if you have questions about boating accidents, jet ski accidents, um, injuries happen on the water that maybe get exacerbated by um, Vibrio or things like Vibrio, um, you can find us on the web at zarzalaw.com, 855-HIRE-JOE uh, if you want to call us on the cell phone. Thank you.